Today I'm going to teach you about clipping masks in Illustrator. It's one of my absolute favorite features and has basically limitless possibilities. So let's dive in. Hi, I'm Lainey. I'm a wedding invitation designer. I love to teach people how to design stationery and run successful stationery businesses. So while you're here, I hope you'll check out so many of our other videos on Adobe, stationery design, invitation tools, etc. And if you're interested in becoming a stationery designer, check out the link in the description for our membership and our courses for invitation designers. All right, so what is a clipping mask? In Illustrator, basically a clipping mask is taking one shape and filling it with something. You can fill it with another shape, you can fill it with a pattern, you can fill it with a piece of art, you can fill it with any kind of roster graphic. If you haven't watched our video on roster versus vector graphics, check that out so you kind of understand the difference there. But the shape that is on top is going to have to be a vector shape. So it has to work in Illustrator, it has to have these anchor points, it has to be fully vectorized. What you are filling it with does not have to be vectorized. It can be a roster image. So for instance, we are gonna use these cool holographic images um, for this demonstration. These are some that I just bought online and you can get really anywhere. And as you can see, these are still roster. They do not have anchor points. Um, they are not editable in Illustrator, but we can use them with the shapes we have in Illustrator. So in order to make this clipping mask, remember I said the top one has to be the vector graphic. The top one is also the final shape that you are filling with whatever you're filling it with. So in this case, we wanna use this envelope liner template that we got from our printer and we want that to be on top. So I'm gonna put this over here and we can see that it is on the top and I'm going to send it to back. So now it is on the bottom. Then we can position this background kinda how we think we might want it on the envelope liner. It's okay though, we can move it later. So then you're gonna select the top shape and then you're gonna select the bottom object together by pressing shift. They're both selected. And then you're going to right click and do make clipping mask. You can also do object clipping mask make and you can also press control seven. If there is an error, you likely will see that. So for instance, if this one is on top and I try to do control seven, it says this top object must be a path, compound shape, text object, or a group of these. So we'll do that again, control seven while we have both of them selected. And what we've done is we filled the top shape with the bottom object, which was a photo of that holographic background. Now, if you select it, you can kind of see the whole background thing coming up there. But if you actually select it, you're only selecting this object and you're moving kind of both of them at the same time. They're locked together. If you want to make any changes to either the top or the bottom, you're going to go up here and select which one you want. This is the top one, the clipping path, and this is the bottom, the contents. So if we wanted to change this up and make it smaller so we get more colors, we could do that. As you can see, the top is getting cut off when we get to a point where it's too small. So we can play with that, we can move it around, we can do a lot of things here. Then if we wanted to edit anything on the clipping path, we could just click this. And for instance, if we wanted it to have a stroke, we could just add a stroke only to the clipping path there. And then at any point, you can always release the clipping mask. The main reason you would want to unclip this mask is when you're printing, if you wanted this to print all the way to the edge of the shape, you would need to print bleeds. I have another video on my channel about this if you're not sure. So sometimes we do release those clipping masks uh, before we go to print so that it has enough uh, room to bleed off of the edges. Now, if you wanted to use it with text, we're going to do basically the same thing. I love this holographic. It just it feels like Easter, you know? <laughs> They're gonna send it to the back. And what's kind of cool is you don't really need to outline your text before doing this. So you can still edit the text even after the clipping mask is made. So we'll just select the top object and the bottom object and click make clipping mask. I mean, how pretty is that? It just looks like Easter. So some of the colors uh, we might want to get a little bit more of, like this R is a little bit hard to read. So we can just play around. This is a lot smaller. The text is a lot smaller than our box. So we might want to just smoosh it up. And especially when we're playing with a background like this, it's not going to matter if you get it you know, out of the square ratio or anything like that. So how cute is that? And then what's so fun is, is if this is like a semi-custom suite, what I can do is actually edit. I can change Lacey's name to Chris. And now we still have the clipping mask. The text is still editable. How 
freaking fun is that? So there are some just easy practical reasons you might need this. For instance, creating the envelope liner and you wanna show it to the client in the shape of the envelope liner, even if you're gonna print it with the clipping mask release and you're just gonna print the whole page and then have it die cut that shape. Um, it's just a functional thing that you can do. You can, I often do a clipping mask on the edges so that I can show my clients what it's gonna look like after it's cut down to size, for instance, and get any artwork that's hanging over the edges or bleeding out of there for the proofing stage. But then there's a lot of really fun things you can do with it, like creating this really fun effect um, with the text here. So I just hope that you see the power of clipping masks and start to utilize them in your everyday design process because they are just so fun and amazing. I'm probably just gonna <laughs> go ahead and make this suite as part of my semi-custom collection because it is just so beautiful. So let me know what questions you have on clipping masks, what other tutorials you might like to see, and while you're here, watch the full Adobe playlist for tons of really fun tricks like this. Thanks everyone.